Olympic best I got lake today then still have you. Well this is where you make it won't match them here do you? Yeah. Soz. How's Soz? He wants me to pass him his landing net. What do you think I ought, what do you think I ought to say people? <laughs> no. <laughs> there you go ladies and gentlemen. Soz has got two decks, so it's the first time I've seen him in months. <laughs> Right, good morning fish people, I'm Alan Norris from Fish on TV and as you've probably guessed you are joining me at uh, Bankend Fisheries, the Callum's Farm at Bankend and at last we've been able to get out, apparently this lake's been frozen over for the most of the last three weeks, it's been awful and I don't think anybody's been able to get out fishing for the last couple of weeks unless it's been on a, a river or something like that but uh, an unbelievable change in weather, it's, um, it's about 10, 12 degrees, I mean it's been minus god knows what for the last few weeks, so I've just not been able to get out anywhere at all. Um, so I've managed to get out this morning, it's there's still, oh it's clear now, just about clear, there was still a little bit of ice up to my right. Um, so, but it's, it's a gorgeous day, considering what we've had. Um, a little plan, we've come to Bank End, I've come here because it's easy, you can park just straight behind your peg, you can put your keep nets in, don't know what it's going to fish like today at all, um, I mean there's a few lads, there's a few lads in that nobody's had a bite yet, um, it's taken me an age to get ready, it's, it's weird, a couple of weeks off from doing it and you just seem to lose that routine of getting everything ready, <laughs> it's been, it's taken me an absolute age to get ready, Soz is here as you've seen, um, He's been giving me some stick for not being ready. But I am ready now. We're out fishing. Um, the plan for today. First of all, let's try and catch a fish. Because I've seen nobody catch anything yet. Um, so I'm on peg 20, 22. It's usually not a bad area. But God knows what these fish must be thinking with this weather that we've had. I don't, I, I don't really know what to expect. In fact, and that's been in now, it's been in eight minutes. As you can tell, I've been getting ready before I talk to you, testing my camera and all that sort of stuff. I've just had a very slight liner. Now, my plan today is I've mixed some F1 Sweet and some, um, oh, I forgot what the bloody call it. It's the, um, I'm terrible. Terrible. It's our Thatcher's, that's it, old school. Thatcher's Pro from Stone So I've got some very sweet, not a lot of feed, and then this is quite a strong fish meal base. And I've probably gone one third, two thirds, two thirds F1 sweet. Quite a dark ground bait, as you can see. And I've done it quite damp because I'm, my plan is I'm fishing at 13 metres and I'm wanting to try, do a bit of practicing in deep water. Now it's about 10. 10, 11 foot, yeah, it goes even deeper the further you go out, so it's about 10 footish out there. I've put three, what I've done is I've put three balls, in fact I've got a little bit here. I've mixed it with a few micros, not that you can see that, a few micros in there. And I've put three balls in about that sort of size, tangerine size, maybe a little bit bigger. Um, not squeezed, not compacted it, because it is quite damp, so as you can see it's it's fairly solid anyway so I've done it where I'm, you try to guess by the time it gets to the bottom it's just about breaking up so that's what I've done now. I've put three balls of ground bait and micros out there at 13 metres I'm going to give that about an hour because I've seen nobody catching the, the fishing on maggots I've seen nobody catching nothing and you're probably thinking it's quite a bit of overfeed but there's a lot of skimmers in here a lot of them and they can feed quite aggressively at this time of year so apart from the few micros I've, I've put in there's not a lot of bait really it's it, it's just it's um, low feed ground bait hopefully it's not going to fill them up too much but attract them in very very sweet mixture in the meantime what I'm doing I've just put a ringers chocolate orange wafter um, bread can work here, but like I said, bread's not been working. Sauce has been on bread for about an hour or so, and he's not had a bite. So 
I'm, I'm just going to give that a miss at the minute. Just gone out with an orange wafter, no feed whatsoever, about five metres short of the aerator to the right. I'm going to work across in two or three different places, then go a little bit further out and just see if there's any fish at, uh, arrived around the aerator because I'm guessing they've probably had it on for a, a day or two once it started defrosting. So not the ideal area where an aerator is in winter but it's not been on since we've been here this morning about quarter past eight. So I'm hoping some fish, th that is usually a favoured area in the middle of the lake here so I'm hoping we might get one or two carp. So the plan of attack mainly is see if we can get one or two carp out there on the bomb. I've, I can change that, it's the ICS system, I can change that to the Juro Banjo feeder which I will put Again, the Dynamite F1 Suite Micros, and that is, I mean, you don't even have to colour those, they're, they're the same colour as the ones that I, when I put turmeric in, it's, uh, I, like, I quite like that colour, it's quite nice. Very, very sweet. Um, I've softened a few 4 mil pellets, softened overnight, as you can see, they squeeze very, very easily, and, and they're just, a, there's like bits of top up for my um, skimmer line. So an hour on this, I'm in a search bout, I might have a little look on the, I'll probably have 15 minute casts having a look round. Um, we're looking for liners, a bite, just to see if we can locate any fish. Like I say, I did have a slight knock on that, so it was a liner type, just a little pull. And just see if we can locate some fish. Hopefully keep you guys entertained and keep me entertained more than anything, I'm actually here doing it. But lovely not to be freezing my socks off, I mean it's been minus god knows what. Eyes freezing up, keep uh, landing nets freezing up. Different today. But will that encourage the fish or will it put them off with the massive change in weather? Who knows? Right, let's get on with the fishing. I was hoping it might go around while you're on but obviously it hasn't. And uh, we'll give you updates as we go along, as we progress, hopefully hooking into one or two fish. Right, just, just to keep you posted on what, what's happening, um, I'd love for that tip to go around while this camera's on, but uh, <laughs> nobody's catching anything at the minute. Just an update on what I'm doing. I've started to the right of the aerator. I had a 15 minute cast there, maybe a little bit long while I was talking to you. Gone in line with the aerator, I'm now to slightly to the left of the aerator, I'll probably move one more cast again left, um, but I've had no signs, there's been no liners, no nothing. I'm about five to eight meters away from the aerator, so my next point of call is try the, uh, the same distance left, if I don't have any signs there, I will go probably just shy of level with the aerator and have a little search around there basically searching your peg um, have a few casts around there see if there's anything see if we can get a pull but I've not seen anybody catch a thing just yet so this is winter fishing like I say even though it's a nice day today that water is absolutely freezing and it's it's clear I can see my landing my keep net all the way through you're allowed keep nets here at bank end I'm hoping I might have some fish to show you at the end, but it's not looking very good because I know these guys will be on maggots and stuff. Like it, oh, I didn't tell you uh, the hook bait. I've got O10 o bottom and an 18 uh, F1 pellet. I'll be using four and six mil pellets for the skimmer line. I've got some maggots as well if I want them. Um, that's what I'll be trying on the 13 meter line. So I've not had a look yet, we're about half an hour, 40 minutes in, no signs just yet. Just keeping my fingers crossed that some fish have arrived on the bait in about another half an hour or so. So I'm due to cast a little bit more, a little bit further left. Um, I might even, when I go a little bit further out, I'm not sure yet, there's been no signs, I might even change to a Juro banjo feeder and sit on that and just wait, you just never know. So that's the plan, it's what I'd probably do in a match anyway, have a little search about to start with, looking for signs. The tip on the rod, um, I don't have it bent round at all, I have it quite slight, just a slight 
bend, very, very slight bend, just in case there is a backbite and you, you can quite easily see it. Um, but I'm just looking for any kind of movement on that tip to give me an idea where there may be some fish. As we all know, they do show up, but they don't move about very much, especially with the water being as cold as what it is. The ice has just disappeared up there, so that gives you an idea of how cold it, uh, it actually is. So, the water that is. It's lovely out here today. No cold hands or anything. It's brilliant. So, that's my next part of call. A little bit further search to the left. Let's keep searching. Let's hope something turns up somewhere. Not looking very good at all. <laughs> Right, well, this weather has really put them off. About three and a half hours, not a bite. I did all the searching. I think the only sign that I had was when I first spoke to you. On my first or second chuck to the, was it first? I think it was first or second chuck, slightly to the right towards that big tree. I had one really tiny, type liner um, but after that I had nothing um, I've been on the pole at 13 meters I've not had a sign nothing absolutely zero and there's been guys to me right been walking down asking if if we're getting any bikes they're not getting any bikes there's one guy apparently right on the end at the top end up there he's had a couple don't know whether they're carp or skimmers I've tried the Juro Banjo, absolutely nothing on that. I even got the pellet waggler out, fishing at about seven or eight foot. I thought, I'll have a look at that. We're getting pretty desperate. There was nothing. I'm tr just trying to find some fish. I just thought, are they up in the water a little bit off the bottom? Because it is, as you go out towards the middle, I'm sure it's about 12 to 14 foot deep. But nothing. Um, Soz has packed up, he's gone home, oh, oh, there we go, straight round, and I've actually, that was a nice, nice bite, I thought it would be a bigger fish than this actually, I ended up going into my van, and I just thought, I wonder if though that little liner was roach or skimmers or something, sort of in between the aerator, me and the aerator, sort of halfway across, so, just a nice little roach. I've had one, another one, twice the size of that, about six ounce, something like that. So that's the third cast on the maggot feeder, and I've had um, three casts, two fish. So, I was getting rather desperate for some fish. Nobody's catching anything. Bob's here as well, Bob and Jack there over there. They've not had a bite. So, I just thought, I've got to try something to try and get see if we can attract a few fish now what I am doing as well on the 13 meter line this is my theory whether it's right or wrong I don't know we'll find out when I have a go on it I'm just catapulting some maggots around that 13 meter area about 10 a dozen maggots I'm three quarter filling this feeder by the way um, just to see if I can attract some fish, you know, just the visibility of, of maggots falling through the water. And then I'll have another go on that because there's ground bait down there. I'll just cast this out. Cast it a plop. I just thought there's... I just couldn't understand why nobody were catching at all. I mean, the carp are probably... They're probably just sat still doing nothing because there's been no carp caught anywhere. Unless the guy on the end, unless he has actually had carp, I don't know. So, I've just gone to the old faithful maggot feeder just to see if I can locate some fish. And that one came after three minutes, that. A real positive pull. I mean, the, the fish that was uh, twice the size it was just a quick indication, a typical roach roach bite and that one straight round no messing so there's been no footage there's been <laughs> no point me just telling you i'm not catching anything all the time it was one of those videos that you start and thinking well do i carry on with this video and show a, a blank but it, it's been rock hard i mean this weather's definitely affected them big time 
Because there's loads of fish in here, loads of skimmers, loads of silver, and they've just not shown. Uh, not had a bite whatsoever. I've even gone just beyond where I put the ground bait as well, just to have a look, make sure that they weren't backing off from it. And again, nothing. Um, so, two fish, two small roach. That's what can happen in uh, in winter. And I know there's some guys out there saying, yeah, come and try and fish on the natural water. You can be sat there all day without a bite. Well, it can happen on commercials as well. If the fish are just not having it, you're not catching it. It's as simple as that. But I've persevered. Two fish, it's nothing to shout about. I'm out in the fresh air. I'm trying to produce a video for you guys, but it has been rock hard, absolutely rock hard. It's uh, it's typical winter. I mean, Mark came round when we were paying and he just said that for the last three weeks there's hardly been any fishing done whatsoever because it's just been iced over. So, and the, and the water, I mean, when I've held those fish, it absolutely, I mean, it, I, it, You've heard people say they're like blocks of ice. Oh, another one. That was a lovely little bite as well. This feels a bit bigger fish. And that's come after 1 minute 54. I didn't even twitch that one. So that's not too bad at all. At least <laughs> I'm having a few bites now. So a little change to maggot fear. I wasn't planning on using maggot fear at all. I wanted to do some deep water fishing. Go. About the same stamp as the uh, as the last one I caught. As you can see there, lovely roach those to catch, and he really is cold. He's absolutely freezing, so I don't mind catching those for an hour or two. Now, like I said before, you've, I mean I've changed my fishing over the last sort of six or seven years from how I was taught to all this method feeder fishing, pellet waggler fishing, pole fishing completely changed to how I used to fish years ago. I was old school, stick floats and wagglers and a feeder. That was it. Ledgering. Remember ledgering? We used to call it ledgering, not bomb bomb fishing as they call it now. But you've just got to try and adapt to the situation a little bit and yeah I'm not breaking any pots here but at least I've just started to catch. I will have another little go on the pole just to see if there's any fish turned up on that ground bait. I'm hoping some skimmers might turn up there, so I will have another go there, but I'm not holding breath because, you know, Bob's here and he knows how to catch silverfish and he's just not had a bite, so I feel pretty lucky that I've got these three fish and luckily two of them have come while the camera's been on. Get in! Right, let's get back out there. We'll see if we can get a couple more. Well, another positive bite, and another, I don't know, what is it, three ounce roach. Now, I've just been down and told Bob, I've just started catching one or two, uh, oh, one or two roach, maggot feeder, so he's making the change. <laughs> so, like I say, rather than sat here all day, trying to catch how I want to catch, I've I've just made a, a change to maggot feeder. I'm still firing a few, catapulting a few maggots over the 30 metre line. Just hoping I can draw a few fish in and let's see if it works. I'm not planned on using the maggot feeder at all, but rather than sat here all day slogging out the way I wanted to try and catch fish, I decided I want to just try and catch some fish anyway. And they're keeping me entertained and the a cracking little bites, straight round, no messing, no, none of those little roachy taps are just straight round, so brilliant. It's better than nothing. I know you're used to seeing people catching big weights and stuff like that, but uh, it's just, oh, right in my foot plate. Right, let's get back out there, just get those dipped. Yes, any fish at this time of year are more than welcome. Like I say, I've not seen anybody on the lake 
like I said, I mean, I've not seen that guy at the end catch it, suppose we've had a couple, but uh, apparently he has had a couple of fish. I'm not sure what they are, but I'm happy catching these. At least it's keeping me entertained. Again, maggot seems to be uh, seems to be the way forward. It has been for a few weeks now. Oh, little, very little indication there. I should, should have probably struck at that. I think I might have missed my chance there because I would have struck at that normally. It's a nice little. Seems a little bit dreamy actually. I'll just give it a twitch. And I've not got hardly any bend at all in my tip. I've got it pretty straight. And you'll find that they just go straight round. If you've got a bend in it, that you tend to get a tap and then it leaves it. By keeping it fairly, you know, just a ever so slight bend on it, just in case you get a back bite. Um, I found that the bites are there's just straight round, you can't really miss them. Oh, that would have been nice if I'd have struck at that and got another one straight away while you were on, but never mind. At least there seems to be some fish out there anyway, so well, we'll keep trying to catch a few on this. And then I'll try that uh, skimmer line again where I've been catapulting one or two maggots and see if any bream have turned up on the, uh, or ski, uh, skimmers should I say, over the ground bait and micros. But yeah, quite happy now. Now I've got a few fish in the net. And the best thing of all is I'm not freezing my socks off. <laughs> right, let's see if we get a few more. Right, it's just slowed up a little bit. I keep getting slight indications. Nothing significant to lift into. And then this one went straight round, just as I was all ready for reeling it in. Oh, that's a quality roach. We don't mind those roach at all, at all. Very nice indeed, look at that. That's beautiful, that. I don't mind them all day long. Very pleased indeed with that one. So I'm about ready for giving my 13 metre line a go, just to see if we can get one or two fish. There's quite a few people packed up because they're not catching anything. <laughs> but, nauseous persevering. I've been down and told Bob I'm catching on maggot feed. I've noticed he's uh, trying to maggot feed. I don't know if he's caught anything yet, but uh, I hope he is. Not in a match scenario, so you tell people what you're catching on. And I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with, uh, with the way it's going at the minute. It's just steady away. Not breaking any pots. But it's just nice to be out, like I said earlier. Catching one or two fish. Let that settle. Pointed pretty much at the, uh, at the feeder because it's quite deep. That's just settled. Got quite a long hook length on as well. Just give that a pull towards me. Hopefully that'll straighten the hook length out. Don't really set that. Yeah, the, the bites, I can't believe the bites for these roach. I mean, don't get me wrong, I've had the odd one that's been a little tap, but uh, that one, I actually thought it was going to be a carp. It drived it straight round, it was fantastic. It's typical. I ain't got the camera on, I wish I'd have had the camera playing there, but it's just this time of year, I've tried it so many times to sort of get some uh, footage of the tip going round. You, you wouldn't believe that that was a roach, the way that went round. It absolutely arrived it straight round like a, like a summer cart bite, virtually. It's, uh, I can press record on the camera waiting for the tip to go around, it just doesn't go out. <laughs> as soon as you turn it off, it's round. But um, we're just steady away at the minute. 
I keep firing one or two, I say one or two, a few maggots out there on the 13 meter line. It's basically doing this just to see if it, it draws any fish in. And then I'll give it another little go just to see if there's anything turned up on that line. I know the maggots spread about a little bit, but um, I have got some bait pinned down there, so I'm hoping that they might actually settle over that. I'm not firing maggots out all the time, it's just now and again just to try and create a little bit of interest, just see if it draws a few fish in onto that ground bait. And fingers crossed, maybe some skimmers might turn up, but it has been rock hard in general. Like I say, I've not seen anybody catching at all. I mean, these, all these down here, they've all gone. It's just the hardy left. <laughs> right. It's not going to go around right, right now, is it? So, we'll wait till we get another fish. Let's see if it's something a little bit bigger. Well, didn't take long, two minutes. Gave it a twitch and literally 10 or 15 seconds later, round it went. Again, I mean, look at the size of that. Absolutely smashed it round, it was brilliant. Another little roach, top lip. But the bites, I can't, I can't believe how good these bites are. I might get the camera up and just start recording, just see if we can get a, an image of that uh, tip going round. Right, lovely jubbly. I did manage to get some footage of that bite, but it wasn't like the others where it's writhed it round. It was a typical roach bite, and it's a nice roach as well. Yeah, the quality roach, these. Really pleased with uh, the stamp of fish I'm catching now. Look at that, another one. Absolutely lovely. That, that's got it to, it's quite a little bit way down its throat, that one. Very nice indeed. Well, it's a typical roach bite, that. It's not like the others where it's right there. But you, bet you don't believe me now, do you? <laughs> Never mind. At least you saw the bite. <laughs> well... I've put a bit of time and effort into that uh, deep line. This is the third roach I've had. But not a lot for the work you put in. I'm getting one or two bites, but uh, the maggot feeder has definitely been the way forward today. Carp have just not played ball whatsoever. Um, I'm just going to have a couple more goes on this. I might have another 20 minutes on maggot feed if no skimmers turned up. I've been on this for about 20 minutes now. Um, it's just been a roach day. Skimmers have not played ball and neither have the carp. So what can you do? It's just one of those days you make do with what you catch. So feeding, catapulting those maggots out there has definitely drawn a few roach in because I, I, even when I tried maggot earlier I just didn't have a sign. I'm getting signs within quite a few seconds now you know I mean you can see how deep it is. It's at least 10 foot deep. Um, so keep firing a few maggots over the top. I'm not going to give it too much more time on here. I'm going to have a, another little quick go on the maggot feeder just to see if we can finish off with a few more decent roach. That's pretty much it. Tough day is uh, a tough day in the office for winter fishing. <laughs> Let's have another go. Right, now I know I've got my back to you. I was going to move the camera around, but uh, we're getting towards the end of the session. Oh, well, that's the quickest bite I've had all day. That hadn't even settled that, so they've definitely uh, switched on. It was definitely a roach. I've catapulted some maggots in, so it's obviously intercepted it before it's settled. And I think what we need, we need quite a few more days like this uh, for the carp to start playing ball, I think. We've certainly not been having it here today. Just about, I think there's only me and another guy left. 
everybody's packed a bit, it has been tough, so... Is it on? I can't even tell him if it's... No, I don't think so, I think I've missed that one. If there is one on it, it's the smallest, but I don't think it is. So there we go. That's pretty much what I'm doing. It's a two gram... It's Dave Harrell float, actually. Um, quite a nice float. I mean, it's even though it's two gram, it is really sensitive. You can see the lift bike's quite nice. Let's have another quick go out there. And I did want to practice this at deep water fishing. It's something that I'm not used to doing. I'm fishing at 13 metres. I did want to practice it, but like I said, about 40 minutes or so on it earlier, and it just wasn't a sign, not a sign. Maybe even an hour, I, I didn't time it, I just... Uh, nobody was catching on the pole whatsoever. I think, like I said earlier, I thought I'm going to have to make a change here. The, the way I wanted to fish definitely wasn't working. And the maggot feeder... I'm pretty sure if I'd have been catapulting maggots on uh, from the off, maybe I would have caught on this quite a bit earlier, but they've certainly not been interested with just ground bait going down to the bottom and soft pellets. They've not been interested whatsoever. It's, it's definitely been a maggot day today for me. I don't know what that other guy caught on at the top end. So yeah, it's... Uh, it's a shame I haven't been getting quite a few skimmers on this line, just to get used to fishing at this... There we go, that's... Is that on? Yes, I think that one's on. Tiny little roach. Got a 6.8 elastic in there, and it's, it's not all right, it'll come off. Oh, sure, let's have a look. Uh, tying into the roach here. Oh, that's not too bad actually. Oh, bigger than oh, nobody likes to see that. Don't swing them in. <laughs> Don't swing them in. <laughs> when you've only got a little 18 hook on. Right, that's what we've been doing. I'm going to get back out there, see if we can get a couple more. Folks, I've done this already, but I didn't realise the um, the receiver had gone flat, um, so there were no sound whatsoever. I missed a little bit of. Uh, Edley might still put it in, but there's no there's no sound on it. Last roach of the day was on the maggot feeder. The maggot feeder has been uh, the saviour for today. I had a couple of roach on the long pole. All in all, I've had about a dozen roach. Nothing to shout about, but at the end of the day, I had to change my tactics. Um, the way I wanted to try and catch fish wasn't working. I've not planned on the maggot feeder, as I mentioned earlier, but it's produced a few fish, a few, a few nice roach, six or seven ounce. Um, dead simple, three quarters filling it. A couple of, dead, a couple of reds or a couple of whites, live maggots. Um, and the same on the same on the pole. Um, like I, I think I mentioned, it, you've just got to, if you're not catching, you've, you've got to make a change, and that's what I did just to get a few fish in the net. Still enjoyed it. I think that's part of the challenge. Um, if you're not catching, because I haven't seen nobody catch anything at all. Uh, I think there's been the odd one or two up there, which I mentioned earlier. But it's been rock hard, very very difficult. So that simple approach it was in the end it was just a maggot feeder catapulting a few maggots out there on my 13 meter line to try and draw a few fish in it worked because I had one or two roach I was getting one or two bites but not like I was hoping no skimmers turned up they certainly weren't playing ball um, the carp weren't having any of it whatsoever there's been no carp caught at all today so 
um, very very difficult day I'm just about packed up now uh, just to unload my van and get myself off so I hope you've still enjoyed a very very difficult day at Bank End on the Match Lake it's definitely the, the weather I mean cracking the turnaround in temperatures has got to be about 20 degrees or something on it 18 degrees I think we've had 12 degrees today or minus 6 and minus 7 I think they're minus 22 in Scotland so it's been a right turnaround it's not ideal for fishing that one there's a massive turnaround in weather temperatures like that we're supposed to have uh, this kind of weather for the next week so hopefully on the bank next week we might see a few more fish may even uh, be catching a few carp so I'm not sure where we're gonna go um, let's just see if we can get a few more fish next week for you so adaptability you've got to adapt to the conditions maggot was the way forward I'm pretty sure if I'd have gone down that line from the off I may have had a few more fish but you just never know this time of year but that's winter fishing for you so I hope you still enjoyed it don't forget folks it's absolutely free to subscribe so click the subscribe button if you click the notification bell you will get all our videos as we upload them and a thumbs up a thumbs up would be very very nice so once again thanks for watching and i hope to see you on the bank weather permitting next week so don't forget guys fish on